You're watching the Guns and Roses. Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and we've got some more news today about Slash's brother who's once again in trouble for putting his foot in his mouth. So if you guys remember a couple weeks ago he lashed out at Slash's girlfriend Megan online and now he's been attacking Slash's own fan groups as well. So Slash's brother Ash of course also got into trouble back in 2015 when he called Axl Rose fat and then had to apologize online. So he's got these new prints uh, that are out now um, for Slash, and I guess they're signed by Slash as well. They're apparently selling for $1,000, and one of these Slash fan groups on Twitter, the Slash Army from the UK, complained about the uh, the price of it, which I think is ridiculous, to be honest. Like 1000 bucks to, to buy this uh, print. Um, it's called, I guess it's considered fine art. So it's 13 by 19 B3, and I guess they have free shipping, which is one redeemable thing. So Slash Japan tweeted, Slash Limited Edition Fine Art Prints, 75 pieces, uh, signed by Slash, free shipping. And then the Slash Army UK responded by asking how much it costs. And when they found out it was $1,000, they thought it was a ripoff, tweeting, Haha, what the fuck? $1,000 for an expletive print? Hell, at this rate, the GNR box set is cheaper by $1. Then Ash Hudson, who slash his brother, responded on Instagram. He said, F you, Raj. Don't be jealous. You can't afford one. F you, slash Army UK. You should spend more time with your kids than worried about what slash ate for breakfast, fanboy. Oh, and by the way, the prints are almost sold out and will only go up in value. So we'd interviewed engineer Dave Dominguez, who worked on Chinese Democracy back in uh, early 98. And he also worked with Slash just before he quit Guns N' Roses. So he told a story about Slash's last couple weeks with Guns N' Roses. So he said, I do remember him Slash saying, uh, if, I'm, if I'm in this band in a week, I'll be surprised. Like he had just had it. Like I'm going to mention, I'm not going to mention who, but he had complained, you know, about a certain member who was probably Paul Hughie or Paul Tobias. And you know that was bad timing, this and that. I just can't deal with it anymore. And then so within, I don't know, maybe less than a month later, the MTV thing where he sent a fax to MTV and said he had quit the band came on. And I was like, cool, I guess I knew. I had a warning, but he was a sweetheart, real good guy, and he was polite. So Slash infamously quit Guns N' Roses in October, and it was announced via fax from Axel on MTV that he was no longer in the band. So in his fax, Axel said that Slash hadn't been musically involved with Guns N' Roses since April of 94, and hadn't been part of the band's business partnership since December 31st of 1995. In the same fax, Axel called upon Duff McKagan and Sorum to renounce what he called the studio, the pseudo-studio musician work ethic. So the the um, the studio um, time that he spent with Slash, uh, Dave talked about how Slash was recording the soundtrack for the Quentin Tarantino movie Curdled at the time, and he was sleeping like two hours a day, and you know he was exhausted because he was going to rehearsals at night with Guns N' Roses, and then he was coming in the daytime to the studio to record the music for the movie, and uh, it seemed like he wasn't very surprised that Slash would end up leaving the gr uh, the group soon after. Now, this was something that Kevin had sent me, and I want to thank him for sending me this to me. So I had always thought Guns N' Roses tour manager was Del James, and then this was a photo that Duff tweeted out. I guess uh, Angie Warner is the band's tour manager. She was up for some award, or she was being uh, congratulated or recognized for something. And if you look her up online, she's about the same age as Fernando, and she works with Live Nation, and she's toured, she's managed some of the biggest tours. Like, I think she worked with, like, maybe the Rolling Stones. There were some other huge bands she worked with. And then <laughs> you should have seen the comments that people posted on the forums saying, I'm not really surprised. I wouldn't really expect the Brazilian family to handle such a major tour. Um, and it's kind of funny. If you guys follow Del James on social media, whenever he's on tour, he makes being a tour manager look so easy. He's always going to museums. He's taking pictures of his toilet in Portugal because he's proud to have a bidet. And uh, and I always wondered, I'm like, you know, being a tour manager has got to be more involved than just going out and doing sightseeing and, you know, basically not doing any work. So I figured that maybe they're like, it's kind of like the assistant to the regional manager. And then Angie Warner must be like the real brains behind everything who's doing all the actual managing of the tour. While, you know, Fernando's designing more useless merchandise that nobody asks for and designing GNR Air merchandise as well. So I think this is really the brains behind the whole Guns N' Roses operation. I was kind of surprised to see that they have two, two tour managers. But it's probably also important to note that Live Nation probably wants to protect their investment and wants to make sure that uh, things are going smoothly on the Guns N' Roses tour, which they apparently are. And finally, uh, there's an old interview with Slash that surfaced online uh, talking about how he met Ozzy Osbourne for the first time. I'd always, always, I'd always wondered 
how he met Ozzy. And it's a funny story. So there's a video interview I've linked down below. And I think this interview is originally from like 2003 or something. So you guys can go check that out. That does it for today's news, guys. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button and subscribe. And go check out GNRcentral.com for the latest Guns N' Roses news. Take care. Richard Gordon, you're watching Guns N' Roses.